friends from two different worlds make one decision that will change their lives forever. I star. Series finale on demand in the Disney Now app and on Disney Channel Sunday at 7.30. Yo, y'all already know what time it is. It's time for the Star vs. the Forces of Evil finale trailer analysis. Now, for some reason, I've watched this trailer at least 10 times and I still feel as if it's not enough. So to end it all, let me just simply get right into it because there are certain points that need to be made. To start off with my analysis, we begin with both Star and Marco holding each other's hands from the previous episode. This time, it seems as if Star explains her plan and then Marco agrees. However, I'm not too sure if Star told Marco about the news with him potentially no longer being a part of Star's life after this. Now maybe she doesn't tell him yet since starting off with that just before they get into action would depress them both. The narrator from the trailer says two friends from two different worlds, but I'm not too sure exactly as to why they put the Eco Creek School with the Monster Castle. I guess the left resembles Marco's educational place of study, while since Star doesn't have school necessarily, she has people like Eclipsa to influence her. And I also love how they mention from two different worlds, as if they were hinting us something. Admittedly, the round table said this before I could have the chance to say it in a video, but I agree that they might try to collide both Earth and Muni's dimension together, which explains the title of the episode, Cleaved. And that would be a good thing since it could help people potentially find their missing family members separated from Skywind's gravity spell. Plus, maybe, just maybe, Marco may be related to the butterflies. Huh? Huh? The trailer then displays both Marco and Star holding hands before walking through the portal of the Realm of Magic. And in speaking of that, they consistently show moments of both Star and Marco within the realm and they don't seem to be affected by it. Perhaps there's a spell or trick that Glossrick or Hecapu informs them about that'll help them fight the atmosphere's effect off. The next clip is of Star in a somewhat traumatized state with what seems to be Moon's hand comforting Star on her shoulder. This could be Star's realization that Marco had to be taken back to where he belongs, which is most likely back on Earth with his family. Or ironically, he'll appear back into Butterfly Castle cause, you know, he's secretly a butterfly. A second scenario could be that Marco sacrificed himself for Star. There is a moment within the trailer where we witness him shielding something in order to take the blast that a male horse shoots out. Or at least that's what I had assumed at first glance. Okay, so it took me about the fifth time to realize what was really going on. Marco seems to be holding his own wand in his right hand, casting a spell quite similar to Star's Cupcake Blast. And most of all, in his left hand seems to be another object that I'm not too sure of what it is. And I understand if this sounds weird, but it kinda looks like Star's old wand from Season 1, maybe. Heck, maybe Glosser created a second wand for the both of them for better protection. And lastly, as for the Mill Horse, I'm pretty sure that this is the same one corrupted from before. But it also may be Star's male horse since the last time we saw her, she was corrupting as she kept tussling with the other male horse in the episode Mama Star. Perhaps that original fortune that was given to us in the episode Fortune Cookie back in season 1 was telling us the truth with the fact that love is the answer and maybe that'll revert the male horse back to its original form. Now I hate to break it down to you guys, but it seems as if Mina may have figured out about Globgor's location once River attempted to heal him at the Magic Sanctuary. And this is probably Mina stupidly believing that if she were to dive into the magic, she will only become stronger. Hopefully that doesn't happen and she'll instead lose her memories as she swims within it. That is, unless the atmosphere no longer poisons the mind as Marco and Star are traveling around in there. This clip is of Star going through the field of corn located right here. And according to the map, she may be headed towards Muni River to the Sanctuary or Pigeon Kingdom if she was facing this way. Or heck, possibly even her way to Butterfly Castle. Or, my personal favorite, she's on her way to see Ludo for assistance. Now I kinda also doubt that since I don't see Star doing that and she could've just used magic to travel there. It is way away from Avarius. Plus, it seemed as if Ludo's story arc was already completed. Perhaps that's what the scoreboard was truly saying. It was the end of Ludo's journey and he won against the many forces of evil. <laughs> wow, I feel stupid. 
Crap, maybe I should just restart that other analysis video. This portion is of both Marco and Star making it to the realm, and we even hear her poofing back to her regular self as opposed to her mubity state. And we got my boy Marco here with his legendary wand. Next one is of Meteora dipping down, and by trying to look at the background, it looks to be late at night on Muni. Eclipsa might enter the battle once she thinks about saving Globgor again. Now my theory is that maybe Glossar training Meteora was in order to prepare her for this very moment. Now can you imagine if Meteora was capable of draining all of the Salarian super soldiers powers making them tremble in fear? Potentially reversing the inevitable future of Star having to eradicate magic and save the day from having the portals closed. Man oh man, if only that were to happen. But nah, it's probably just to fight off Mina at the Sanctuary. Now I could be wrong, but this could be dark clouds forming in the sky due to an evil presence, and it looks to be in the same atmosphere Meteora was in. Hopefully I'm incorrect, but this could be Mina getting a power up afterwards once she dives into the magic. This is of the dark male horses surrounding both Marco and Tom, which might be after Tom gets uncorrupted after being left inside of Oscar's car that episode. He doesn't seem threatening in this take, but yet in the next one where he stands beside the dark male horse instead of in front facing it. This very clip, however, may be of Marco taking a hit from Tom after witnessing his possessed self. Or through the mill horse with a blast since we see him get up after dropping his wand and noticing a purple hole. He could have been stabbed, but I completely doubt it even though the mill horse was notably known in the previous episode to completely run towards its victim. Now can you imagine if all of a sudden his evil monster arm came back to save the day actually preventing Marco from being corrupted? Sorry, I just love of thinking about outlandish theories that could have even a 1% chance of happening. Anyways, on a serious note, this mark looks critical and this might lead up to a legitimate Star vs Marco scenario possibly ending badly. In this shot, we have Star extremely upset about something, maybe about the same thing from earlier but it seems to be different since we don't see Moon appear yet. However, this could be the moment just before Star completely breaks down into tears while Moon comes to the side to support her. Okay, this had me going because... I have no idea what the freak is going on. <laughs> What, you guys thought I had all the answers? The only thing I know is that on the left of us, we have Rhino the Riddled, and on the right, Festivia the Fun. <laughs> More like Festivia the Full of sh So my only guess would be that since the former queens were able to appear in the tapestry room, they could be able to appear in the real world. Or maybe someone did end up using Skywind's spell to bring back the dead. Or... And this is my very last prediction. This whole time, the mill horses resembled the original queens the whole time, and now they've evolved. Now, once again, I'm saying random tomfoolery in order to get one of those theories right, and I'm counting on the last one. The ending is with Marco saying bye to Star, as if the job was done, and he decides to go back on Earth with his parents. Bye, Star. And of course, something else may be what gets him to say this, hopefully not a sacrifice. And that's being heard as Star lets go of Moon's hand, allowing herself to fall within the well of magic just inside of the sanctuary. Plus, notice all of that newly corrupted magic goop on Star and the well itself. Could this be Star's way of getting back from the realm and then later deciding to go back after Marco makes a huge decision to save everyone else? Well, ladies and gentlemen, Find out next time on the next episode of Star vs. the Forces of Evil. This has been TNBT, and I hope to see you there when it happens. Peace!